everyone. Um, this is actually some Copic coloring from the critters from the ornaments from yesterday. And so people had requested to see how I colored them, so I thought I would show you in this video. I really do wish I had that fast forward function, um, but unfortunately I don't yet. I'm hoping to get a new computer that has that program that has that. So it's a little slow, but it does show um, coloring some of the snow critters. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, Bye. So we're going to use, this is a three and a half round grip grid block that we sell. And I'm going to use Mr. Polar Bear here because he's super cute. And I'm going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And this is the best one for the Copics, or at least I, I like it the best for myself. And we're going to kind of kind of color this guy. Now I'm going to stamp him twice. Why? Because I'm anticipating possibly messing up this coloring. So. <laughs> So there he is, all stamped. And what I'm going to do is... Okay, so I've stamped both polar bears and I've colored in their nose. I started coloring this guy and I don't like how it turned out at all. And then um, I don't know what I got on there. It's like a piece of chocolate or something. So we're starting again. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use the cool gray number one. If I, I wish I had two tones of the gray. Um, if I had two, I would use that um, to, to do some sh more shading. But I'm just going to use this cool gray to go around and kind of shade like on his paws where it might be kind of dirty. Um, and like on the little, so the, the, the bear can kind of give you a clue. You know, his little rump here, which is not really a little, big rump. Uh, but you know, on his leg, on these marks is where is a good place to shade, just like that. So it kind of gives you some good places to put your shading already, which is really nice. And so he's just got a little bit of shading. It gives him a little bit of something, you know. Um, I'm going to put this blue paper here. I think it'll be easier to see. So um, so you can see here the first one, how it's a little too gray. And this guy just has a little bit of something going on. I might add just a little bit more with the gray. This is one of my crafting problems. Just add a little bit more. There's Putter again. Okay, and then I want to give him a rosy cheek. I actually have a marker R20. It's called Blush, so um, I'm going to go with the name. And I'm just going to practice right on this other bear, which is sometimes why I like to have a little extra one next to me so I can, if I've never tried something before, I can kind of try it. Um, I'm almost wishing I had a lighter pink, but I don't think I do. I think I can just give him a little, a little something there. And just go, I'm going over with the gray right over the pink. And I think I'm going to use my colorless blender and just kind of. your lot out a little bit. So now he's got this cute little blush mark on him. So that's really cute. And um, so now we're just going to cut him out real fast. So Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is, um, since I've got my polar bear going and he goes really well on this smaller flower, I'm actually going to do the reindeer for the larger one. And so I'm just going to ink him up really well the memento ink. Stamp them right here. And um, I'm going to do some coloring. So, okay, so one thing I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to add, um, I'm going to make this polar bear all gray. It's just a really light wash of all gray. Um, because I realized when I put them on this flower, since it's, this flower is a little grungier, when he's bright white it doesn't look exactly right. So I'm actually going to make him a nice light gray all over. So I'm just coloring him in. And then the cool thing is, is we can go through with this T5 toner gray and um, add just a little bit of extra. Okay. 
and then blend that in. Remember when you're blending these colors, you're kind of actually dragging the darker color with the lighter color. So, so you have to decide is where you want to drag it to. So I want to drag it kind of towards in towards the beer. This one I want to drag up a little bit. This one I'm dragging here. This one I want to kind of drag down his body, his leg I want to drag down to his foot. So I'm just doing a little bit of shading here. And then I'm just going to go over a little bit more with my gray just generally. Just to smooth them all out. And the cool thing about doing it kind of like this, like in these fast bigger circles, is it actually looks a little furry. So I like doing this with my critters sometimes, is actually giving them texture with the way that I colored. So I don't mind his paws being a little darker like that because, you know, they're like dirty from hanging out, playing around. So there is my bear. And then now I'm going to color in um, the reindeer. And some people had asked about how I did this, so um, I just wanted to show you guys. It's not super fancy coloring as usual, you know, um, but uh, but you know, it is you know it is cute. So I am gonna actually color. Actually, I'm gonna do it at the end, but I am gonna color um, him as Rudolph as opposed to just a deer, so he won't just get a black nose. But I'm gonna color in first. This is E31. Brick beige, and I'm coloring in the actual deer. And like I said, I do it fast. I don't care if I go outside the lines because I know I'm cutting them out. So I'm just doing that. Then I'm going to go through and um, kind of go through with the light walnut. And I'm essentially going to be coloring over him, over this uh, brick beige. But it's because I'm going to introduce that color later to kind of lighten him up. And I like to kind of go, I feel like it kind of adds some depth to the color. And I'm doing this long circle technique again to look like fur. So it's not technically the correct way of Copic coloring, but I think it looks like fur. So I think it looks cute. So now I'm taking E27 Africano. And I'm adding highlights, just like I said before, you know, like on the ears or where all these little curves are on the reindeer. And on his tail, on his reindeer rump, on his legs, belly, and right here. I'm going to go through and mix these in again with this. E57 walnut. You'll see it's just gonna, it's a really subtle shading. It's really subtle. And so now I'm gonna go back. Well, the next thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna do his antlers next. And I'm just gonna use the 20, uh, E27, the Africano for that, the dark one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over twice. Because if you add color over again, it does get darker. So I'm going to go over maybe even three times. And you'll see how it's getting darker. So you can see those antlers getting darker and darker as I add this color on over. And so we'll do that with the other. And we're going to add those other layers again. Like I said before, I am not a Copic expert. I just do what works for me. Um, I think crafting is art, and and there's no wrong way to do art. You know, that's kind of the way I feel about it. So um, there's no wrong way to color in a reindeer. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to take this brick beige again, the light color we did at first that we can't really see, and I'm actually going to add 
this color in and it's you're gonna see it's gonna actually take away color from the reindeer so you can see I'm kind of lightening up a little bit so it's actually gonna take away that color and kind of bring that that beige out on him and it makes him look a little bit furrier and it really lightens him up so that his his little antlers really stick out so I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second here first he needs to become Rudolph so I'm using R27 um, lipstick red or R29 excuse me lipstick red and I'm just giving him his red nose and as I did that, I realized there's a place without any color there. I was trying to avoid his nose, and I missed a place. Okay. So, I'm going to cut him out in a second, but I want you guys to see. Hopefully that's focused, my camera. You never know what it wants to do. But, um, there you go. You can see how it actually looks like a fur texture on the critter. And so I really like that look. So I'm going to go ahead and cut him out, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I used my black Copic marker to round um, my cutout images, you know, just to go around the edges so they look all finished and nice. 